In this section, we are going to study equivalent sets. Our main goal for the rest of these lessons is to measure the size of these sets. Now, suppose we are given this simple set S. How do we measure the size of this set? We simply count it, right? So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So basically, what we are doing there is that we are setting up a 1 to 1 correspondence or a bijection. 1 to 1 correspondence is another term for a bijection. We are creating a bijection from the set 1, 2, 3, 4 to this set S. So in what's happening is that we are mapping 1 to 68, 2 to 5. It is saying that the function f maps 1 to 68 and so on. So here is now the definition of equivalent sets. Suppose that we have two sets, S and T. We say that they are equivalent if there exists a bijection from S to T. If this holds, we are right that S is equivalent to T. So going back to this example, we now say that the set containing 1, 2, 3, 4 is equivalent to the set S. If there is no bijection from S to T, we say that S and T are not equivalent and write it this way. Now, let us take a look at the definition of S being not equivalent to T. So, in symbols, so we have S is not equivalent to T and this is the definition of S equivalent to T. The definition says that there exists, so there exists. First, a function f from s to t such that f is a bijection. So therefore, the definition of s not being equivalent to another set is that for all, there exists becomes for all, for all functions from s to t, f is not a bijection. So therefore, when we are showing that two sets are not equivalent, we start with let f be a function, any function, then show that it is not a bijection. So for example, let us consider a, b, and c. So just by looking at this one, a and b are equivalent. Why is that? There is a one-to-one -one correspondence or a bijection from a to b. It maps a to 1, b to 2, and so on. So until f, you map it to 6. Okay. Similarly, I will leave it up to you to write the function. b is also, this one should have a parenthesis, b is also equivalent to c. You can always find a bijection. It can be 1 goes to 0, 2 goes to 1, and so on. A is equivalent to C as well. Now, what about number 2? 1, 2, 3, and the set of natural numbers. Are they equivalent? Is there a bijection from the set 1, 2, 3 to N? Now, if we make a function F from the set 1, 2, 3 to this infinite set, set of natural numbers, definitely what will happen? The most that we can get from here is that, of course, we want it to be 1 to 1, correct? Because we want f to be a bijection. However, what will happen to the range of this f? It will only contain three elements, correct? Those three elements are distinct, which means that there will be extra elements in the set of natural numbers. So, therefore, they are not equivalent. But of course, for a proof of that, so let's go back to the definition. It says that we will start with let f be a function. So we have let f be a function from s to t. And we will show that f is not a bijection. Now, if we look at this one, so we say that since s has exactly three distinct elements. Okay, the range of f has exactly, actually, exactly three 
elements. And so the range of F is strictly smaller than the set of natural numbers. Let us recall that if a function is surjective, the range of F should be the same as the codomain. So F is not surjective. And therefore, since it is not surjective, it is also not bijective. So we have shown here that for any function from S to T, that function will never be a bijection. Next, what about the set of natural numbers and the set of even natural numbers? Let us first try to imagine what will be the one-to-one -one correspondence between these two sets. So set of natural numbers, so we start with one, two, three, four, and so on. What would be the most natural bijection from the set n to the set of even natural numbers? Where will one go? It will go to what element? The most natural is 2, and then 2 will go to 4, 3 will go to 6, and 4 will go to 8. What is the rule of f? So this is a function from n to 2n, and it maps a natural number to 2 times itself. Or in other words, we are saying that f of n is equal to 2n. And then exercise, verify that f is really a bijection. So this concludes that n is equivalent as 2n. So when we are saying that two sets are equivalent, that is the meaning of say, that is equivalent in saying that they have the same size. So we all know that 2n is a proper subset of n. However, they are equivalent. This is already the proof that they are equivalent because we were able to find a bijection from the set of natural numbers to the set of even natural numbers. What about the set of even integers to the set of odd integers? Let us first try to find a bijection just like what we did here. What will be the most natural function to define? Set of even integers, so we have 0, 2, 4, 6, and so on. Let's just try to look at some numbers. And then here, of course, we have negative 1, 1, 3, 5, and so on. If we look at that, this is already a 1-to-1 one -one correspondence. Negative 2 to negative 1, 0 to 1. 2 to 3, 4 to 5, and so on. Correct? So therefore, what is the rule of this function? We define it by f of n goes to, it goes to itself plus 1. Correct? Remember here that n belongs in the set of even integers. So n here is an even integer. And of course, n plus 1 would be an odd integer. So again, another exercise show that f is bijective. Here's a theorem. The set of natural numbers and the set of integers are equivalent. So again, take note that n is a proper subset of z. However, they have the same size. They are equivalent. So just like what we did in the previous examples, let us try to find a natural bijection between the set of natural numbers and z. This time around, I will draw the real number line and then I will plot the set of integers. What will be the one-to-one -one correspondence from the set of natural numbers to the set of integers? So we want to sort of count the set of integers, of course, using the set of natural numbers. So to make sure that we can cover everything, I will start here at zero. So this is one and then two and then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. So if we look at this, we will be able to cover all the elements in the set of integers using the set of natural numbers. So 
we now just have to define what is that function f, what is the rule for that. So we will define this function from the set of natural numbers to the set of integers. Okay, take note that for the even natural numbers, we can define f of n to be equal to what? Look at this, if we have 2, it goes to 1, 4 goes to 2, and 6 goes to 3. So if n is even, it goes to n over 2, correct? What about if n is odd, just like here, 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on? So if you look at 3, 3 is, what's the relationship between 3 and 1? Let's not mind the negative first. 3 is equal to 2 times 1 plus 1. My 5 is 2 times 2 plus 1, and so on, correct? If n is an odd integer, we can always write it as 2k plus 1, and we want n to go to its negative k. So solving for k here, what do we get? We have n minus 1 all over 2, that's k. But what we want to do is to map n, where n is odd, to its negative k. So that's 1 minus n all over 2 here. n is odd. So this is what this is what we want. 1 minus n over 2 if n is odd. Let's just verify that this is really the case. f of 1 is equal to 1 minus 1, so that's 0. My f of 3 is 1 minus 3, negative 2 over 2, so that's negative 1, which is exactly what's happening here. So again, verify that f is a bijection. Here's another example. We want to prove that the open interval 0, 1 is equivalent to 1, 4. If we just look at 0, 1 and 1, 4, it's as if they are not equivalent, correct? It's as if 1, 4 has more elements than 0, 1. However, that is not the case because we will show later that there is actually a bijection or a one-to-one -one correspondence between these two sets. We want to make a bijective function. What will be the simplest function? It will be the line connecting 0, 1, and 1, 4. So what is that function? It is a function from 0, 1. 1, 4, defined by a line, correct? It has slope of 3, so that's 3x and a y-intercept of 1. However, take note that this function is only defined from 0, 1 to 1, 4. If you just say let f of x be equal to 3x plus 1, that is not the function because you really have to show that that function is a function from these two sets. So the important thing whenever you show that two sets are equivalent is to always find a bijection. Of course, there are a lot of bijections that you can create. However, it's good to always come up with the simplest function that you can think of. Now, in general, we can say that that is true for any open intervals, A, B, and C, D. So again, this is left as an exercise. But of course, what will be the simplest function? So we will just generalize what we did in the previous slide. So if this is your a, b, and then this is your, let's say, it can be negative, and then c, d. So we can always get this line. Okay, so I will leave it up to you to write the rule defined by this function. Now, this relation, equivalent, is an equivalence relation on the class of all sets. What is that saying? It means that if u here is a universal set, the relation is an equivalence relation on class of all sets, so the power set of u. Let us prove this. So first for reflexivity. How do we show that this is reflexive? We need to show that for all, oh, what will I write here? This is an equivalence relation on the power set of u. And what are the elements of the power set of u? It 
those are just sets. So for any set A, we want to show that A is equivalent to itself. Why is it true that A is equivalent to itself? What will be a bijective function from A to itself? We just take the bijective function F to be the identity function on A, right? And this is bijective. Next, for symmetric. To show that the equivalence relation is symmetric, we need to show that for any two sets, A and B, if A is equivalent to B, then B is equivalent to A. So therefore, we start with let A and B be sets. And then suppose, this is our implication, so we assume the premise. Suppose that A is equivalent to B. We need to show this one. Show that B is equivalent to A. What does it mean for A to be equivalent to B? Remember, this green part is not included. So we have suppose A is equivalent to B. Hence, there exists a bijection. F, let's call that F from A to B. To show that B is equivalent to A, we need to find a bijection from B to A. And what is a very good candidate for that? The inverse function of F. Correct? And we know that that is a bijection because F is a bijection. Let us recall that if a function is a bijection, then its inverse relation is actually a function, and in particular, it is a bijection as well. Okay, and then they have the domain and codomain are simply reversed. So I will write here, since F is bijective, F inverse from B to A is also bijective. Therefore, we have that B is equivalent to A. For the part that it is transitive, that is an exercise. Now, suppose that we are given four sets wherein two of them are equivalent and another pair are equivalent. Then, when we create this, when we form this Cartesian product, the Cartesian product of these two will also be the same. Now, for us to be able to determine what is that function, what is that bijective function from A cross B to C cross D, let us first try to give an example just so that we can determine the best possible function. So, suppose that my A is just a set containing one element and it is equivalent to C. So, C, let's say, is just yeah, I'll just call it small a. And then b has two elements. So let's say 2, 3. And then d has two elements also. So let's call it small b, small c. All right. Since a and c are equivalent, the one-to-one -one correspondence, my f from a to c, is just 1 goes to a. And then here... I'll call it G because this is another function. This is from B to D. And then 2 goes to B. 3 goes to C. So meaning to say B is G of 2. C is G of 3. That's just another way of saying that. Now, what are the elements of A cross B? 1, 2, and 1, 3. And the elements of C cross D are... A, B, and A, C. Okay, so what is now the most natural bijection from, let's call it H, from A cross B to C cross D? So we can map 1, 2, 2, A, B, and 1, 3, 2, AC. Okay? Now, take a look at this one here, the correspondence here. A here is the image of 1 under F. So, this is actually F of 1. And then B is G of 2. 
And then a here is f of 1, and then this is g of 3. In general, what, how will we define the function from h from a cross b to c cross d? So we define h of a, b. This is an arbitrary element in a times b. We need an ordered pair in c cross d. And what would be an element in c cross d? f of a. Remember that my f is from a to c. Okay, so therefore f of a is in c. And then here we will write g of b. This is an element of c. This is an element of d. So for our proof, let me just copy the premise. So th since A is equivalent to C, there exist bijections F from A to C and G from B to D. And then we are now ready to define our function, let's call that H, from A cross B to C cross D, H of A, B to be equal to F of A, G of B. So we need to show that H is a bijection. I will prove that H is 1 to 1 and then it is an exercise for you to show that H is on 2. How do we show that something that H is 1 to 1? We need to show that if two images are the same, then their pre-images are equal. Remember that definition of one-to-one. -one. If the images are the same, so let's say h of a1, b1 is equal to h of a2, b2, then the pre-images a1, b1 is the same as a2, b2. Of course, the quantifier is for all A1, B1, and A2, B2, in A cross B. So if we are getting two elements in the domain such that they have the same images, then those two must be equal. Okay, so therefore we start with let, because we have for all. So let these two elements be in A cross B such that they have the same images. Take note that I should actually have another parenthesis here, strictly speaking, because the input for H is an ordered pair. However, I will just drop that just to make things simpler. All right? So H of A1, B1 is F of A1. Get the image of A1 under F. Get the image of B1 under G. This is H of B1. And similarly, this is equal to F of A2, G of B2. I am using this one. However, when are two ordered pairs equal? They are only equal if the components are equal. I will no longer use sentences because I have no more space. So this just means f of a1 is the same as f of a2 and g of b1, the second coordinates, are the same, the same as g of b2. However, look at this one. What do we know about f and g? They are bijections. In particular, they are one to one. We have here that two elements have the same images under f and since f is one to one, this means that the pre-images must be the same. So the reason behind this is that F is 1 to 1. Similarly here, B1 is the same as B2 because G is 1 to 1. So since A1 is the same as A2 and B1 is the same as B2, so therefore... The ordered pairs A1, B1 is the same as the ordered pair A2 and B2. So we have just shown that H is 1 to 1. So for number 2, 
Let me just write it here. H is surjective. This is exercise.